Harrison Barnes is returning to the Sacramento Kings with a new three-year deal, and yet some Kings fans are freaking out about it. I'll tell you why this is a good thing and still sets the Sacramento Kings up for more off-season success right here on Locked on Kings. You are Locked on Kings, your daily Sacramento Kings podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is that time, time for another episode of Locked on Kings. Hello and welcome into Locked on Kings, your podcast hub for Sacramento Kings coverage all off season long. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account and use code Locked on NBA for $20 off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. My name is Matt George. I have the privilege of being your host here. I'm the Sacramento sports reporter and producer for ABC 10. And just when I thought I was going to be heading out on a vacation, the Sacramento Kings say, hey, not so fast. You got one more show to do. This is my second show of the day. If you join me for my first show where I did a live show, a live Locked on Kings podcast uh, for, for over an hour, um, a lot of what we talked about in that podcast was the likelihood of the Sacramento Kings signing Harrison Barnes. I always thought that this was the most likely option. I shared with you why I never thought that it, it could possibly be a bad thing. And it's absolutely not a bad thing that Harrison Barnes is returning. So I got to work a little bit more here before I can head out on vacation. But truth be told, I'm happy this deal got done uh, before I left because I'm happy to be able to talk about it right now while reactions and emotions seemingly are at their highest. I'll address the the, the fan reaction in just a second. Um, Harrison Barnes coming back on a three-year, $54 million deal, $18 million per year. That is the exact number that I felt comfortable with, $18 million per year for Harrison Barnes, which is the exact same um, uh, amount that he was making over um, or, or last season for the Sacramento Kings. I am just assuming doing basic math, 54 divided by three is 18. I'm assuming this contract is a flat rate. I do know that there's a 10% trade kicker involved uh, in this contract too, which which helps Harrison Barnes a little bit uh, if he is traded away, uh, which could still very much happen down the road. And maybe that was just a little extra incentive that the Sacramento Kings need to throw in, throw in to get this deal done. It's not my money. So I have no issue with that, that trade kicker um, whatsoever. I'm happy that Harrison Barnes is back. Like, this is not a bad thing by any means for the Sacramento Kings. Now, I understand that there might have been upgrades out there. There might have been upgrades available for the Sacramento Kings. There are better players than Harrison Barnes as your starting small forward. I'm not going to come on here and, and drink so much purple Kool-Aid to tell you Harrison Barnes was the best option the Sacramento Kings could have gotten. But the thing with free agency is it requires the right player to want to join your team for the right dollar amount. And we don't know the specifics of if Monty, if the right player for Monty even wanted to come to the team or if the right player wanted to come for the right amount of money. Maybe they were demanding too much money. Maybe the wrong players were willing to come to Sacramento for the right amount of money. We have no idea. What we do know is that Harrison Barnes is extremely reliable. He played all 82 games last season and all seven playoff games. I don't know if he's going to be able to do that again. I don't think he's ever done that at any other time in his career. The Sacramento Kings dealt with a lot of injury luck over the course of the regular season. Of course, we know that caught up to them a little bit in the postseason with De'Aaron's injury and the injuries that Sabonis was dealing with and, and stuff like that. Regardless, Harrison is reliable and something that I've been hitting hard both on the Locked on Kings podcast and on ESPN 1320 uh, when I appear with D'Lo and KC over the last couple of weeks. Harrison Barnes already knows what the Sacramento Kings are doing. He knows this system. He knows Mike Brown. The Kings can roll their starting five, even if it's the exact same starting of five as last year. They can roll that starting five into training camp this year, hit the ground running, and build off of the success that this team established last year. This team absolutely can get better by running the same starting five back 100% by running the entire, the same core back. And I know a lot of the issues that Kings fans supposedly have with the Kings bringing back Harrison Barnes is they felt like the Kings are just running this team back and not improving. This team absolutely can improve. And that includes Harrison Barnes. Now I don't expect 
Harrison to be a better player now that he is signing arguably or likely his last big contract of his career. He might get another contract after this. Maybe it's a small contract for um, for less money. I have no idea what Harrison's going to look like three years from now uh, when he's 34 years old. But right now, as a 31-year-old, I expect Harrison Barnes to do much of the same of what he's bringing. I would hope that Harrison Barnes would provide more of a presence for the Sacramento Kings in the playoffs when they return to the playoffs next season. I know a lot of you and a lot of Kings fans are naturally skeptical about that because over the course of Harrison's career, he hasn't performed the best in the playoffs. Neither has Kevin Herter. And I want to make sure it is emphasized that yes, the Kings would have loved to have had Harrison Barnes hit that three-pointer, that game winner in game four. The Kings would have loved to have more from Harrison Barnes in game six and especially game seven with their backs against the wall. Absolutely. I'm not giving Harrison Barnes a pass for that at all. But the Kings did not lose the playoff series because of Harrison Barnes. And the Kings are not guaranteed to be a first round exit again simply because they're bringing Harrison Barnes back. People saying that that is a, an emotional, angry, frustrated reaction that I just do not understand. Bringing Harrison back is not a bad thing in the slightest. It is not a bad thing. And even if Harrison is not the long-term plan for the Sacramento Kings, which as of right now, he seems to be since they signed him to a three-year deal. But like Howard Beck and I talked about on the Locked on Kings podcast a couple of weeks ago, this is a contract, an $18 million per year contract is something that easily can be moved, even with the trade incentive or trade kicker, easily can be moved in the future if the Sacramento Kings want to make a big swing for a star that suddenly becomes available if the Kings are entering a championship window, which ultimately is what Monty McNair is trying to do. And speaking of Monty McNair, we have no clue what Monty was involved in and what he wasn't involved in. There's a very good chance, and I think the indications uh, or the, the the suggestions of or the, the fact that we knew the reports that Harrison Barnes and the Sacramento Kings were negotiating, they were close to a deal, and then things went silent for a couple of weeks. And over those couple of weeks, what picked up steam? OJ and Anobi trade rumors, the possibility of the Kings making a play for Draymond Green, which is pretty much dead. The possibility of the Sacramento Kings making a move for Kyle Kuzma. The reason why we heard over that two-week period all these rumors and all these possibilities of the Kings making other moves is because Monty McNair was looking at other options. Ultimately, he decided that bringing Harrison Barnes back on a three-year, $18 million per year deal was the best route for the Sacramento Kings going forward. Just because the Kings ended their playoff drought and they're an exciting team doesn't mean there are free agents lining up to come to Sacramento. We have no idea if Kuzma was really willing to come or Draymond was even interested in coming or OG and an OB trade that was even possible without trading away pieces like Keegan Murray that the Sacramento Kings did not want to give up. We don't know that. All we know is that the Kings looked at other options. Clearly, they were involved in other conversations, which is exactly what you want out of your general manager. And Monty McNair has always talked about being aggressive and staying aggressive. He has done that his entire time in this uh, his career so far as the GM of the Sacramento Kings. When the move has made sense, he's pulled the trigger like the, uh, the Tyrese Halliburton and DeMontis Sabonis trade. When the move hasn't made sense, he has not made a move just to make a move. And I feel like a lot of Kings fans who are reacting negatively to this tonight wanted the Kings to make a move just to make a move. The meltdowns that I'm seeing on social media look the exact same to the meltdowns that I read at the trade deadline, the reactions that I got on social media. Now, I understand this is not the majority of the fan franchise. These are just the loud people interacting on social media. You are my people. I appreciate you. I love you. Even if I adamantly disagree with you, and even if for some reason you're taking shots at me, calling me a shill for the organization, if that's how you feel, whatever, I don't care. I can't change the way that you, uh, you fan, and I'm not going to even try to. But I remember when the Kings only made the move for Kessler Edwards at the trade deadline. It was the Kings are doomed. What are they doing? How did they not go out and get Matisse Thibel? How did they not go out and get Mason Plumley? And the Kings need a backup center. What are they doing? Are they out of their mind? There's no chance they're going to hold on to that three seed. There's no chance they're going to plummet. The rest of these teams got better. They're going for it. The, the schedule's only going to get tougher. The reason after reason after reason why the Sacramento Kings are doomed because Monty McNair decided to stick with the core like I told you he was going to do. 
and he didn't make any moves at the trade deadline. What do the Sacramento Kings do? They come out of the, the All-Star break as the hottest team in the NBA. Not only did they secure the third seed, they made a big run for the second seed and even held the second seed over the Memphis Grizzlies at one point. Trust in Monty McNair. Trust in what he's doing and what he's building. He, he, he's earned that trust. At the very least, you don't have to be overly excited about the Kings bringing Harrison Barnes back. To be honest, I'm not. I know who Harrison is. Harrison's a good player. He's a solid, reliable, starting small forward. And I remember how difficult that has been for the Sacramento Kings to find over the last 20 or so years. It's been difficult for the Kings to find a player to Harrison Barnes cali caliber at that position. So I am more than happy to see him return to Sacramento. I think he's great here. He's also a great guy, a great locker room leader. And I think the Sacramento Kings are much better with him than the chances of being without him, of course. But I know Harrison Barnes is not a world beater. I know he's not a superstar. I know Kyle Kuzma was sexier for certain offensive reasons or the, uh, the idea of OG Ananobi and what he can do to the defense. Like I get that there were other more attractive options out there. But clearly, Monty didn't, didn't feel like they were the right moves to make right now, or they weren't available to begin with, or they never got even close to becoming a real thing. It looks like what Monty McNair did is he tested the waters. He had this Harrison Barnes contract extension that Harrison and his camp were clearly interested in, in his back pocket. He looked at other options. He realized the night before free agency that those options weren't as good or weren't likely to happen and didn't want to run the risk of losing Harrison Barnes to the Indiana Pacers or other teams that were interested in him in free agency. Cause I almost guarantee you HB would have been a day one free agent. The Kings decided to bring him back, lock down and secure that position. And at the very, very least maintain control over him that they can move on from in the future. If they really need to, this is not a bad thing. Sacramento Kings fans. It's not a bad thing at all to have Harrison Barnes back. You can be underwhelmed. You can be disappointed, but understand the Kings are not doomed to fail because they brought Harrison Barnes back. And I see a lot of people talking about the 24th overall pick. So you traded the 24th pick and Rashawn Holmes just to bring the guy back. Why didn't you keep the 24th pick? I will talk about that and more of these complaints that I'm reading and seeing on social media here in just a second after I tell you about one of our great sponsors here of the Lockdown Kings podcast. I'm talking about prize picks. Prize picks is daily fantasy played the way it was meant to be played, the way it works during like the NBA season, for example. And you can do this for the WNBA right now. You pick two to six players, and if they will go and score more or less than their prize picks projection. If you get it right, you can win up to 25 times your money on any and every entry. No competing against other people. It's just you versus the projections available. And it's not just for basketball. Of course, PrizePix offers projections for the NFL, for MLB baseball right now, for college sports, for PGA golf, combat sports, if you're into that, even uh, international sports like, uh, like uh, I don't know, uh, tennis, Euro basketball, cricket. Uh, the WNBA is not international, but they have it for the WNBA, like I mentioned. Even esports, NASCAR, they have it for. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's that easy. They offer safe and fast withdrawals. It's currently operational in over 30 states and in Canada. Download the PrizePix app or go to prizepix.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First time users can receive 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code locked on. If you deposit $100, PrizePix will give you $100. Don't forget to enter promo code locked on at sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. Anybody who's been in a relationship knows that there are times where your, your significant other, your partner just wants to be angry, right? And they look for things just to keep making them angry. And that's what I think the 24th overall pick has become for Sacramento Kings fans right now, because the 24th overall pick, like it, it it's not that great of a pick. Okay, I know it turned into Omax Prosper, and I know a lot of people like the idea, myself included. I like the idea of Omax Prosper, but here's the reality. The 24th overall pick, the Kings would have been lucky to have that pick turn into a player as good as Harrison Barnes is. But you might be saying, yeah, man, I'm not saying that the Sacramento Kings uh, should have chosen the 24th pick over Harrison Barnes. I'm saying, why did they trade the 24th pick to make more money and to get more cap room only to bring Harrison Barnes back when they could have done that without signing or, or without uh, trading away the 24th overall pick. Let me lay this out to you 
And a lot of this is speculation because free agency hasn't even started yet. We've heard a lot of conversations about the Sacramento Kings trying to give Sabonis an extension, which would also include a raise for this season, and it would extend him going forward, meaning the Sacramento Kings would avoid him going into unrestricted free agency next offseason. There's also the uh, Sasha Vizenkov negotiations going on. The Sacramento P Kings issued qualifying offers to uh, Nemeas Keita and Keon Ellis, making them restricted free agents. Trey Lyles is in the uh, or is on the Kings radar and reports are the Kings are very interested in bringing Trey Lyles back. If the Sacramento Kings can accomplish all of that and bring Harrison Barnes back for the 24th overall pick in Rashawn Holmes, that's a win for the Kings. Now, it might be underwhelming to you because you're going, okay, you're basically running this team back, except you added Sasha Vizenkov and you added two second round picks. Whoop de doo. I get if that's underwhelming to you, but just because it's not new doesn't mean it's bad. I understand, like, like to me, the idea alone of the Sacramento Kings being able to extend DeMontis Sabonis and bring Harrison Barnes back in the same offseason, that's a tremendous win for the Sacramento Kings. You have to understand, like, remember all the conversation around the Sabonis Tyrese Halliburton trade. So much of it including here on this podcast, was, man, the Sacramento Kings have to make sure they don't lose Sabonis to free agency because if they do, they traded away Tyrese Halliburton and more specifically, they traded away years of control of Tyrese Halliburton for a couple seasons rental of Sabonis. Take the fact that Sabonis has been on this team and had a rough playoff series out of it because that context does not matter. You're talking about an all-NBA center. You're talking about the foundation of everything that the Sacramento Kings did well last season. You're talking about one of the primary reasons why the Sacramento Kings went from a laughing stock to the third seed in the Western Conference. If you can secure that without having to worry about him making the choice, you don't, he's not going to be a restricted free agent. He would be able to choose where he goes. He could get max offers from multiple different teams and choose to leave Sacramento and the Kings can't do a thing about it instead of having to risk that next offseason. You can secure him right now while also bringing back your starting small forward and still having money left over to add pieces and bring back pieces of players that you think are important to the future and the rotation of your team. That is a great offseason, even if there's not a shiny new Kyle Kuzma, OG Ananobi, Chris Middleton, or whatever sexy name out there that you wanted the Sacramento Kings to go out and get. That might The Kings might never really have had a chance to get in the first place. That's where this money is going. Just because the Kings gave $18 million a year, $18 million essentially of cap space to, to Harrison Barnes. They still have 15, 14, something like that million dollars remaining in cap room. The Kings did not spend every single penny of the cap space that they opened up for themselves on that draft night trade just on Harrison Barnes alone. So stop talking and acting like they did. I know you might be disappointed because the Kings didn't get that big name that, again, may never have been realistic in the first place. We just read the rumors and thought it would be fun, and that's what we would do if we were playing NBA 2K and Monty McNair was in Fantasyland. Like, I get it. I do that too. But that's not realistic. On top of everything that I just said too, not only that, but you traded the 24th overall pick to also open up almost $13 million in cap space, which was the final year Rashawn Holmes' deal next offseason, which is money you can help to improve this team and specifically money that you can use to bring Malik Monk back. The, the negative reactions aren't necessarily surprising to me, but the melting down, the anger, the rage I'm seeing from some Sacramento Kings fans about bringing Harrison Barnes back, I think it's just silly. It's short-sighted. It's unnecessary. And I hope it's only like a 48-hour reaction, and then we can just move on from it when we get to the California Classic and we realize, oh, wait, the Sacramento Kings are still a damn good basketball team. The Sacramento Kings, if they're going to win a playoff series, it was always going to be because guys like Keegan Murray were improving and Kevin Herter was having a better series and De'Aaron Fox and DeMontis Sabonis are, are playing better, not just because Harrison Barnes is suddenly going to come out and average 20 points per game in the playoffs. Like, the Kings are still in a fantastic position. And a year ago, we were talking about, do the Kings have to trade Harrison Barnes because they could lose him for nothing nothing in the offseason? Because I almost guarantee you, if last season had went the same way 
that it had gone the seasons before, Harrison Barnes wouldn't even consider coming back to the Sacramento Kings. Why would he? It's been hell basically the entire time that he's been here. Now the Kings got him back. The Kings got their starting small forward back on a very reasonable deal. They did not have to overpay for Harrison Barnes. Even if you, for some reason, think that Harrison Barnes is a $15 million per year or less player, that's not accurate, especially with the new CBA. He's worth $18 million per year, 100%. You're not massively overpaying or even overpaying that much at all for Harrison Barnes. Brendan Nunez put this out. Deal uh, Players with similar deals in recent years. Spencer Dinwiddie signed a three-year, $54 million deal. Bogdan Bogdanovich signed a four-year, $68 million deal. Norman Powell, five years, $90 million. Kevin Herter, four years, $65 million. That's $16 million per year. Like, those are solid starter options. Harrison Barnes is a solid starter. He's a fourth, sometimes fifth man on your start in your starting lineup. Fifth option offensively. This is fine. This is good for the Sacramento Kings. What's also good for the Sacramento Kings, what's good for Kings fans, what's good for the Locked On Kings podcast is this app called Game Time. Buying tickets to your favorite events shouldn't be stressful, whether it's a concert, it's a sporting event, uh, a theater show, whatever it may be. Getting tickets should be easy and getting tickets last minute should be profitable. Look, sometimes we're we're uh, priced out of events at the very last minute. We don't know if we're able to go or not. Our schedules aren't necessarily open. An opportunity opens up. Hey, I want to go to that concert tonight. Hey, I want to go to that game tonight. And then you go and you see last minute tickets are more expensive than the market should be, right? With game time, it's the exact opposite. Game time offers you flash deals on last minute tickets. And I took advantage of a flash deal when I was in San Francisco covering the Kings playoff series. I went to, uh, I got last minute tickets to go see the Giants play the New York Mets. And I sat in lower bowl tickets, like 20 rows off of the field that were normally like 60 bucks a pop for 32 bucks a piece. Like that's just an example of a game time deal nearly saving me 50% because it was a last minute flash deal. Don't plan months in advance. Game time has deals on tickets right up to the day of an event for you to go and uh, take advantage of. And if you're like me and you want to know what your view is going to look like, game time has some of the most accurate images of what your view is going to be from your seat than anyone out there. It's not just a general like section view. It's specific to your row and to what's around you. Uh, Nighttime, daytime, does not matter. They have it all. Download the game time app, create an account, and use code locked on NBA for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply again. Create an account, redeem code locked on NBA for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Look, if you don't like Harrison Barnes, if you don't think Harrison Barnes is the right guy to bring back because he's not going to help the Sacramento Kings win in the playoffs and he struggled in the playoffs, you might be proven right. And if you are, Congratulations. You can say I told you so. But please don't be that guy or that girl who's on social media or who is saying I told you so every single time during the regular season this year. Harrison Barnes has a bad game or misses a shot or makes a mistake. Don't be that guy. And I know the majority of fans, even if you're not happy that Harrison Barnes is back, you're going to cheer for number 40 because he's wearing Kings purple. And ultimately, at the end of the day, you support this team more than you support your own ideals. I get that 100%. I appreciate you for that. Just I'm telling you, this is not as bad as you might be making it out to be. And I think the majority of you have wrapped your brain around the the reality that this was a good move for the Kings going forward and that this is not the end-all, be-all for the Sacramento Kings. Harrison Barnes still might not work out in Sacramento. It still might not work. I'm not guaranteeing anything. It might not work. In fact, there might be some of you out there that are saying you, you have no faith that it'll work. Well... One, I think this team has has earned the right to prove you wrong, and I don't think it would be that surprising if you were proved wrong, number one. Number two, Harrison Barnes can be moved at any time, just like Kevin Herter can be moved at any time, or Malik Monk, or whatever player you don't like or don't think is going to help the Sacramento Kings ultimately win a championship. They can be moved at any time. The Kings are not stuck with Harrison Barnes for the next three years now and, and unable to make any kind of improvement if they see fit. And I don't believe Harrison Barnes, even if his numbers in the playoffs are not as good as they should be and are flat out disappointing at times. I don't think Harrison Barnes is going to be a hindrance, is going to hold the Sacramento Kings back in any way in a playoff series because I don't think the Sacramento Kings are looking to Harrison Barnes to be as impactful and as significant in those moments as Kings fans are making it out to be. He might get more big buzzer beater opportunity, game winner opportunities 
in the future because he's left open because teams would rather take that gamble than give De'Aaron Fox a good look. You might be right about that. That might happen again. I'm not saying that he's never going to get those opportunities again. And he might miss them. But ultimately, the Sacramento Kings are going to win playoff series. The Sacramento Kings are going to compete for championships because of the core that is already here. The core guys, the stars that are hopefully going to be here long term, which Harrison Barnes is a supporter of. He is part of the supporting cast. He is a role player. He helps them. He fits with them. He fits with this team. That is why I believe the Sacramento Kings are going to be successful still with Harrison Barnes here. Welcome back to Sacramento HB, or I'm glad you never left. I'm really excited about this deal. I'm excited Harrison Barnes is here on a good price, and now I'm excited to see what the Sacramento Kings do with the rest of their cap space here with free agency. I really, really hope to see Sasha Vizenkov come over. I really hope to see Trey Lyles come back. I would love to see both Nimi uh, and, and Keon Ellis back as well. And then maybe the Kings make other kind of minor, small money deals that nobody sees coming that we might like or might dislike. No idea. We'll break those down when they happen. And who knows beyond that? Maybe we'll get another trade because remember, the Kings made that Kevin Herter trade out of nowhere uh, after free agency started last year. Anything can happen. Monty McNair is definitely not done. So we'll see what the Kings decide to do. Plus, if they are able to sign uh, Demonte Sabonis to get this extension and get that handled, so we don't even have to worry about that or talk about that going forward, boy, would that be a fun thing for the Kings to accomplish too. Offseason's off to a great start. Even if you disagree or don't feel like it, I hope uh, I hope you come around because I think the offseason is off to a great start for the Sacramento Kings, uh, and I can't wait to see how the rest of it plays out. Remember, I'm going on vacation. I leave tomorrow morning bright and early, so whatever the Kings do in free agency for over the next week, I will not have a podcast to react to it. So just so you know, just a friendly reminder about that. But I appreciate your support as always. Uh, Thank you for tuning in. Even if you adamantly disagree with me and are screaming at me in the comments, go ahead. Let's talk about it. We can do it in a civilized manner. You don't have to call me a shill or call me names or anything like that if you disagree with me. And I I promise you, I'm really trying to not tell you how to fan. You can feel the way that you feel. I'm going to adamantly disagree with you, but I'm not telling you that you're a bad fan or you're stupid or you're an idiot or because you don't agree with me, you're wrong and you're dumb. I'm not, that's not me. You could be right. Only time will tell. But I feel very, very good about this. I feel strongly about this. And I think logically we should feel good about this as Kings fans. I'm sharing that opinion. That's what I do. So thank you for your support. Can't wait to have you join me on the next episode of Locked on Kings. Enjoy your 4th of July. Enjoy your week. Can't wait to uh, be back and, and chat with you soon. Until then, my name is Matt George. You have been listening to the Locked on Kings podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network.